Thank you. Should we begin? Yeah. Good morning, everybody. First of all, uh, I would like to wish all of you happy Gandhi Jayanti. So apparently today is a Gandhi's birthday and that is a very, very historical day. And I'm very, very glad that I'm in India to celebrate Mahatma Gandhi's birthday. So it is very nice. Second, we would like to continue on the theme of inflammation. We talked certain things about it, that uh, what is inflammation and even a little bit what causes inflammation and even a little bit that how it has been linked to various chronic diseases. So having said that, I just want to bring it up. This is one of the latest review that we did, 2018. And if anybody is interested, can look it up. And I might have even a PDF on my computer, if I can open a computer. And uh, apparently what this is all about is that again, inflammation is a double-edged sword, which means one edge of the sword is good for you, the other edge of the sword is bad for you. So it is good for you because the immune system is a very important part of, the, of inflammation. Without inflammation, you don't have an immune system and you need immune system to protect you for all kind of environmental pollution. But at the same time, that same immune system, if it gets out of control, then it can cause havoc. It's like I mentioned yesterday, I gave you an example of a gunda. You know, if gunda, if an, a guy is under control, and if he does things and he listens people, he listens his mother, father, brother, sister, and he's in harmony with this world, everything is fine. So if the same person gets out of control, he does not listen to anybody, he abuses everybody, and he runs away from home, and he does all kind of nasty things, and that is gunda. So that gunda is out of control. And that is exactly what happens with inflammation. A good guy becomes a bad guy. So, and then it turned out that it is linked with to not only uh, chronic diseases, it is linked to, it is age related. So it turned out that uh, I may have mentioned yesterday that in most cases, this inflammation starts at the age of 20. Because when the guy is below 20, he or she is under the control of mother or father. So he or she will do whatever parents are telling him to do. But after 20, he is looking for his own independence. So therefore, as older he gets, more he wants his own independence. And it turned out that the whole aging phenomena is linked with that. Okay, and several age-related diseases, inflammation is playing a role. So everything is in this review and I highly recommend you to look it up. So this is what I mean by lifestyle, that what causes inflammation, and here you have a cigarette smoking. I don't smoke cigarette. I don't know if any of you do or not. But cigarette smoking is one of the biggest culprit in uh, uh, causing inflammation. 
biggest culprit and uh, and one third of all cancers in america are caused by cigarette smoking just imagine one third so you can eliminate one third of cancers just by eliminating tobacco and the country that i'm standing right here in india it is a one half 50% of all cancers are due to tobacco 50% half of the cancer is are gone if india did not smoke tobacco because in india people not only smoke tobacco they chew tobacco so therefore it leads to 50% of cancer whereas in america it is mostly smokers so there is a cigarette smoking and there is a radiation fortunately in countries like india nobody sits in the sun like this so therefore skin cancer is very rare in india but skin cancer is very very common in america why radiation okay and then drinking alcohol is very 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 common in america and the 20 year old kid when i said it becomes a gunda and he is going to the bars and getting drunk and america is the most drunkard country that i know of and there are bars in every nook and cranny okay so and drinking can cause liver cancer and various other cancers and then diet is another biggest problem in america and america has the worst kind of diet and apparently there are over a thousand different kind of foods and i'm going to show you in my slides an average american eats no more than 10 that's it so same hamburger that is bought from mcdonald for breakfast lunch dinner that's it so 95% of the america do not cook at home they eat out and that's what they eat and then obesity obesity can lead to cancer too and america is the most obese country in the world in the whole world so obesity can lead to cancer so these are the some of the lifestyle risk factors and in addition i have spelled out potential sources of information so they are environmental pollutants and industrial pollutant diesel acid rain that can lead to inflammation and environment of pollution is one of the biggest problem in america and everybody trying to find the ways to go around it and then there are food factors called grilled food fried food red meat all leading to inflammation and cancer you can imagine and then there are bacteria such as helicobacter pylori and various others that can cause inflammation okay and then there are certain viruses such as herpes simplex virus hiv hpv ebv all these various viruses cause remember i mentioned all of you yesterday about nf kappa b and i mentioned you how nf kappa b works all these agents activate nf kappa b and when i say it causes inflammation that is through activation of nf kappa b and i'm going to show you you know cigarette smoke one puff of cigarette smoke will activate nf kappa b causes inflammation and so cigarette smoke and stress so as far as i know people are more under stress now than ever before and it is a, a psychological stress oh i have to do this i have to do that so that stress leads to inflammation 
they cannot some people can handle the stress while others people cannot and that is where things like meditation things like yoga and all the other things come in to handle the stress how to overcome the stress so people are more under stress and then ph hypoxia heavy metal chemotherapy as i mentioned chemotherapy is used for the treatment of cancer and various other diseases so chemotherapy itself leads to inflammation and once it causes inflammation it lead to chemo resistance and radiation it lead to radio resistance and and then ultraviolet radiation causes inflammation and alcoholic beverages as i already mentioned they will all cause inflammation so you have to find the ways how to control all this fact and if you don't there is a serious problem okay so so you can see that so so much so as of september 4 2019 a paper appeared in a journal called jama jama means journal of the american medical association and it is the most prestigious journal okay in america and in the world and look at the title of the journal inflammation in adolescence linked to early mortality that's the title of the article i did not make it up this is the headline from jama so it affects leads to early mortality so you have to find the ways so they did all kind of their homework and i'm not again going to go through but you can see that this is just the abstract that inflammation during late adolescent may be associated with early death from cancer or cardiovascular disease a large study published by jama online in jama pediatric the investigator used erythrocyte sedimentation rate data as a non specific marker of inflammation and during a mean follow up for 35 years maximum age 57 and they looked at 5000 of the men died okay underlying the cause of death including cancer cardiovascular diseases alcohol or drugs and suicide traffic accidents and falls after adjusting for potential co confound the esr was associated with overall mortality and this is the latest news as of last week or two weeks ago at last month so we ourselves have published an article in nature reviews and uh, that is signaling pathways of the tnf super family a double edged sword because we think that all this inflammation is coming from tnf and tnf is not bad for you it is good for you if it remains in the immune system to do whatever it has to but the moment it gets out of the immune system it can cause havoc so if you are sitting here right now and you are in peace and you look at your blood samples you will not see any tnf but the moment you have any kind of pathological condition moment you are mad you are angry you have all kind of infection or you have this thing or that issue that means tnf is up and doing its job so you can very easily tell so so again i use the word double edged sword that uh, which means tnf is good for you if it is under control and it is bad for you if it is out of control okay so here is another one that just appeared in blood which is another uh, uh, very prestigious journal and where we put historical perspectives on tumor necrosis factor that how tna was discovered and we put all the perspectives and yesterday i mentioned some of that in my talk and its super family and now 
TNF has become a super family. There are almost 20 members of the TNF super family. Okay. And uh, 25 years later, a golden journey. And when I use the word a golden journey, it not just means 25 years, it also means that curcumin, the turmeric, the Indian solid gold as a potential treatment against TNF. So that's what I refer as a golden journey. So I put together all the information and that is the dealing with all the different members of the super family and how to control them. And again mentioned in this review. So this is what I mean that cancer is a preventable disease that requires a major changes in lifestyle. 90 to 95 percent cancer can be eliminated just by changing lifestyle. You don't need to spend any money, you don't need to do anything. 90 to 95 percent. Okay. So no drug that I know that can treat cancer, can cure cancer that uh, has been discovered till now. Okay. So, so here I already mentioned tobacco, 30 percent of all cancers are due to tobacco and in India it is 50 percent and diet as they say you are what you eat is 35 percent of all cancers due to diet that what you are eating or what you are not eating and 14 to 20 percent is obesity and 18 percent is due to infections and 7 percent is due to environment of pollution and radiation and only 5% and maximum 10% is due to the genes that you inherit. And these are the cancers which are due to the genes occur only in children. Because children have not done anything and they came, come down with cancer because they inherited bad genes. So 90 to 95% of the cancer is due to what you do in your life. It is that simple. And again, we have a whole review that is published in Pharmaceutical Research. If anybody is interested, can look it up. So I think it is a very, very, very simple solution. But simply you have to be willing to work on it. So coming back to inflammation, it was this gentleman from Germany. And his name is Rudolf Warschau. So he wanted to be a mayor of Würzburg, which is a, a city, very, very nice city in Germany. And whenever he did not win the election, he came to the lab to do the research. And that's what he did his whole career. So he was the first one. And here I mentioned the year 1821 to 1902. And it was in 19, 1850 that he defined inflammation as a redness. Whenever you have inflammation, your skin turns red and it starts swelling. And uh, there is a heat, you feel kind of hot. And there is even hurts, there is a pain. And that is the definition of inflammation. Okay. So this is what he defined. And he was the one also to link inflammation with atherosclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, cancer, asthma, Alzheimer, you name it. So he was more than 100 years ago, almost like 150 years ago, he was the guy who did all the work. Okay. So he came up with another terminology for inflammation called ETs. What is ETs? So somebody says, oh, I have an arthritis. All what they are talking about, inflammation of the joints. Okay. 
So the word itis means inflammation. Somebody says, oh, I have a bronchitis, inflammation of the bronchus. Somebody say, oh, I have a sinusitis, inflammation of the sinus. So gastritis, inflammation of the stomach. So you go to a doctor and doctor tells you, oh, you have a, you know, gastritis or you have a colitis. Hey, what the hell is colitis? So all he's telling you, you have an inflammation of the colon. So wherever this word ET appears, it means inflammation of the various. Am I clear? So as of today, there are 200 different kind of ETs. 200. And these are all inflammation of the different organs in the body. As I said, you know, you go to a doctor, you know, he says, oh, you have a, you know, bronchitis. Or you have a hepatitis. All they are talking about inflammation. So these are 200 different kind of ETs. Okay, so you can very well imagine and that is why I tell people, I do not know of any disease known to that happens in humans that is not linked with inflammation. And my definition of that is based upon here 200 different kind of ETs. So this is the beginning of a disease. Okay. So, there is a, a disease which is very common in India called ulcerative colitis. And, and if you look at the incidence of ulcerative colitis in Japan, it is 7.9 per 100,000 people. In India, it is 44.3 per 100,000. And again, America is taking the lead 229 per 100,000. No country has more ulcerative colitis than America. And you will hear even in your relatives that people coming down with ulcerative colitis. And this is inflammation of the colon. Okay. So I'm giving you sort of examples that are linked with inflammation. So this is quote unquote summary that where you have a hepatitis virus, you have a helicobacter pylori, you have a tobacco smoking, you have a high fat diet, you have a radiation, you have uropathogens, you have alcohol, all these things leading to inflammation and this inflammation leading to bronchitis, it is leading to hepatitis cervicitis, colitis, pancreatitis, gastritis, you know, and the list goes on and on. And now, if somebody has a bronchitis, that will lead to lung cancer. If somebody has a hepatitis, that will lead to liver cancer. Inflammation leading to cancer. If somebody has a cervicitis, that will lead to cervical cancer. So, each one, and somebody has a colitis, that will lead to colon cancer. So each one of these itis eventually leading to cancer. So earlier you stop the, the itis, better it is for you. But once you reach to this stage, it is very, 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 very difficult. And as I said that most cancers in America, they are detected at the age around 50. Whereas most cancers in India, they are detected at the age of around 40, 42, between 40 and 50. So, so cancers occur in India a lot earlier than they occur in America, okay? And uh, because our genes are different and versus uh, whatever the American genes. So I also mentioned yesterday that NF-kappa B 
what is NF kappa B, how does it work and turn out that NF kappa B is a major mediator of inflammation in most chronic diseases. So, wherever you have a ETS, it is because of NF kappa B. So, NF kappa B is a master switch, is a major mediator of inflammation in most chronic diseases including cancer and if you were to inhibit NF kappa B, you can prevent and even delay the onset of the chronic disease. Very simple. Okay. So, anything that is not clear? Any question till now? So, apparently arthritis is, a, is the inflammation of the joints and that the person suffers enough from arthritis that it cannot even go to that stage where it can lead to the cancer of the joints. You know, that simply person cannot walk and you know, and uh, there is no cancer involved over there. Yes. So, the cancer is mainly primarily for the organs whereas arthritis you have a simply joints there is no organ involved. Any other question? Sir, my question is inflammation is always the foot or has a particular role in the body? I'm sorry? Uh, uh, inflammation is always lethal or it has a particular role in the body? Inflammation is always what? It is all, I'm sorry, is I. Is it always lethal? Or always what? Is it inflammation, is it always lethal or does it has any protective role oh, for okay. life? So, oh, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm sorry that I had a hard time understanding. So, remember that I told you inflammation is a double edged sword. That one edge of inflammation is good for you, other edge of inflammation is bad for you. So, what is good is the immune system. So, immune system cannot work without inflammation. So, but if it remains in the immune system, everything is fine. But moment now inflammation gets out of the immune system, it can cause havoc. So, inflammation is good if it remains in the immune system. But moment it gets out of the immune system, it is like a fire. If fire remains at one place, nobody gets hurt. But if fire spreads everywhere, it can burn all different parts of the body. Am I clear? So anyway, so I think that is where it is coming from. So I also mentioned yesterday that all of you are sitting here and hopefully all of you are at peace. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. So, that means your NF kappa B is down. That means your inflammation is down. That means you are enjoying your life. But moment you get mad, moment you get angry, moment you have all kind of issues within yourself, inflammation shoots up. And now you don't know what to do. And that is where what I also mentioned that uh, some kind of meditation, some kind of device that you have, everybody has to come up that how can I stay calm, how I do not get mad and that only you, you can decide, nobody else can because it is very personal. You know some people just go take a walk, some people do this, some people get drunk. And that can make things even worse. So now there is a marijuana, you know, and that is becoming very big in America. So people go start uh, chewing marijuana, you know, making this drink, that drink about CBD, the active component of marijuana. So they do all kind of strange things to control their anger or fear or whatever. But those are not the right way. Okay. Excuse me.
So yesterday I mentioned you NF kappa B and I also mentioned that there are over 500 different genes that are regulated by NF kappa B and these are those 500 different genes. Just imagine, just by controlling one transcription factor, one NF kappa B, you can control all these genes. You can imagine the list. It is not just one gene. There are multiple genes. And here are cytokines. We were talking about cytokines. And here you can see whole bunch of cytokines and whole bunch of interleukins and whole bunch of viruses, receptors, cell adhesion molecules, cell cycle regulator, transcription factors, you know, proteins involved in antigen presentation, apoptosis regulator, enzymes, they are all regulated by NF kappa B. Just by controlling NF kappa B, you can control all these genes. Multiple genes. Okay. And no drug that I know of, known to man, that can, you know, control all these genes. No drug. So, what drug industry does, they pick one target at a time, such as cyclooxygenase 2, which produces prostaglandin. So, they will make an inhibitor, a chemical inhibitor of cyclooxygenase. It is called Celebrex. I don't know what is called here in India, but in America it is called Celebrex and they will try to sell that as a drug. And it has a billions of dollars of market. So they pick one target at a time. But how about other 499? They have no clue, they have no way of going. And that is where I told, told you the mother nature. Mother nature has the mechanism to control all of them at once. And that's where curcumin comes in. But no drug that is produced by the pharmaceutical company can do that. That I know of. Okay. So they will pick one at a time. You know. So here is that I mentioned yesterday is TNF. TNF will activate NF kappa B. And mind you, that happens. Five minutes, ten minutes, you can fully activate NF kappa within ten minutes. And that will lead to the expression of IL6, interleukin 6, which will uh, uh, lead to the activation of STAT3 pathway. Yesterday I mentioned you about STAT3 pathway as well. And now this NF kappa B has been linked with the survival of cancer. So you inhibit NF kappa B, cancer will die. That is involved in chemo resistance. So if the patient develops a resistance to chemotherapy, you block NF kappa B, you can overcome the resistance. That is involved in proliferation of the cancer. The tumor cannot proliferate without NF kappa B. And here I linked, indicated all the different genes that are involved. And I again indicated here all the different genes that are involved. And that is linked with angiogenesis. For the cancer to metastasize to different organs, it needs angiogenesis. It needs blood vessels. Otherwise, it just remains where it started. So, and that even that is linked through NF kappa B that is involved in invasion and metastasis and that is involved in bone loss. So all the bone loss that occurs is due to NF kappa B. And there is a company called Amgen. So they came up with the antibody against this just one protein called rank ligand. And they are making billions and billions of dollars. So America is all about making money. And I know where that money is coming from and what they are doing. Just antibody against it. So antibody against this TNF, I mentioned, is a $50 billion market. And antibody against a rank ligand, again, is several billion dollars. I don't know exactly the number. The question is, who can pay for it? 
So therefore, they go for your insurance. And if insurance does not pay, then you have to pay from your own pocket. It is a big, 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 big racket. So, so these is the basic, all the pathways. Again, we have a review. Inflammation and cancer, how hot is the link? We published in Biochemical Pharmacology. You can look it up. Everything is spelled out as far that goes. So, I already mentioned that you are sitting over here, you are peaceful, your NF kappa B is down. But in case of cancer, without exception, you can see tobacco linked cancer, carcinogen induced cancers, and virus induced cancer, UV induced cancer, virtually all the cancers without exception. And of kappa B is permanently on. Permanently on. And it is proliferating. So you can imagine. Constitutively. Because remember I mentioned you yesterday that there's a normal guy and there's a gunda guy. And the gunda guy can be reversible or irreversible. You can teach him, you know, to come back home, that's irreversible, or he simply doesn't want to listen. He's gone, he's finished. You cannot bring him back home. That is irreversible. And that is exactly happens with these cancer guys. They are irreversible. You cannot bring him back to normal. Very, very hard. Okay. So, the thesis here is NF kappa B addiction and its role in cancer. One size does not fit all. So, this is another review that we did where we are showing that how cancer is addicted to NF kappa B. And it is uh, something that is almost impossible to reverse it. Okay. And, and, but then I also say one size does not fit all. What does that mean? The pathway that leads to NF kappa B activation is different for different cancers. Here I have indicated all the different pathways. Because depending upon, you know, there is a brain there, you know, there is a liver there, there is a ovary there, you know, any of those organs can come down with cancer. But, but what leads to it, it is, these are all the different pathways. Okay. And with the curcumin, I have yet to find a tumor cell that we cannot kill enough capability. And again, I'm going to show you why that is true. Okay. And uh, so all this NF kappa B is blocked in all these various pathways. So we have another review. And again, if anybody is interested, can look it up. Targeting inflammatory pathways for prevention and therapy of cancer, short term friend, long term foe that if the thing is happening short term, very short distance, it can be a friend, like an immune system. Immune system, when it comes on, there's nothing wrong with it. But if it remains on for long term, it can cause havoc. It can lead to all kind of autoimmune diseases. But short term, no problem. So apparently this is a clinical cancer research that uh, anybody interested can look it up. So, in this review, what do we basically talk about? That here is NF kappa B that lead to DNA damage, what is called oncogenes, cancer causing genes, NF kappa B can lead to that. And that can lead to normal cell become a cancer cell. Transformation. It is involved in, uh, in survival of cancer. It is involved in proliferation of cancer. It is involved in invasion, 
it is involved in angiogenesis and it is involved in metastasis. So you can see and here we link put down all the various proteins that are linked to all these various processes over here. Protein by protein. Okay. And then what we say here that it is 10 to 20 years of inflammation from here to there and then which leads to cancer. So as I mentioned that most cancer here in India they start around the people in 40s and, uh, and they are detected in 40s but they start in 20s. So they start in 20s and they are manifested at the age of 40. And then it started metastasizing into different organs and that is another 10 years. So total 30 years of period that I indicate that leads to transformation, survival, proliferation, invasion, angiogenesis and metastasis. Is that clear? Okay. So whatever I told you so far is not just true only for cancer, mind you. And here I have outlined all the various other diseases where NF kappa B has been linked. So you can see that uh, here I put down cancer, arthritis, AIDS, asthma, headache, diabetes, aging, lupus, the list goes on and on. You name the disease. And have kappa B is there. Okay. And yet, it is a very, 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 very important part of the immune system. As I mentioned yesterday also, NF kappa, without NF kappa B, you don't have an immune system. And you need immune system. So NF kappa B is needed for B cell development, for B cell proliferation, for T cell development, for T cell proliferation. And those are all very important components of the immune system. And nobody can do without it. And yet, same NF kappa B, when it gets out of control, it can lead to all these different diseases. So, very, very, very important to keep it under control. Okay? So again, that this is a review in Journal of Molecular Medicine that we published way back then. So cigarette smoking, as I mentioned, that here you can see from the title that we were the first one to show that cigarette smoke activates NF kappa B and induces COX2. Very simple. And we have shown in multiple dif different systems and uh, published it. And, and then most people who smoke cigarette, they come down with lung cancer. So we examined the patient with lung cancer and for NF kappa B. So there are different stages of lung cancer. So those different stages are normal epithelium, hyperplasia, squamous metaplasia, moderate dysplasia, and carcinoma. So this brown color is NF kappa B, and as you can see, as disease gets more and more advanced, there is a more and more NF kappa B gets activated. So that tells you things are not going the right way. That means, you know, a, somebody must find the ways to block NF kappa B. We had people who did the clinical, they made aerosolic curcumin, aerosolic, and giving to the patients and see if we can block NF kappa in the patients. Okay. So obesity is another one that, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, America is the most obese country and obesity is also increasing in India and uh, it is a very big problem. So 14% of all cancers in male and 20% of all cancers in female are caused by obesity. You can imagine. 
And so here I outlined all the different cancers that have been linked to obesity. Okay. So, so that is uh, uh, there. So bottom line is, so we wrote a review and published in Cancer Cell that the N of kappa B is the enemy within us. Okay. This is the enemy, the way to find out what is going on. And then I wrote another review, N of kappa B, a friend or a foe in cancer. If it re N of kappa B remains in control, it is a friend because you need the immune system. And, but same NF kappa B, when it gets out of control, it becomes a foe. Okay. Then another one that we did, NF kappa B in cancer, a matter of life and death. Again, communicating the similar feelings. That how NF kappa B, although it is a good guy, if it remains under control, but it can become a bad guy, moment it gets out of control. And I'm giving you a headline news because there is a lot of information that uh, we have uh, published and any of you can go look it up. And, but to first try to digest the headline and then you can look up the rest of it. Okay. So, so bottom line our working hypothesis for last 20 years has been stress, NF kappa B, inflammation, and cancer. And that's what I have said so far. Okay. So, how much time we have more? 15 minutes. I'm sorry? 15 more minutes. Okay, good. So, so having said everything I told you about inflammation and NF kappa B, and I showed you all the paper that we have published. So that is our opinion. That's my opinion. Question is, what other people think of it? Do they agree with me? So therefore, I'm showing you, here is a paper published in Science by one of my colleague, Lisa Cousin. And you can see the title, Neutralizing Tumor Promoting Chronic Inflammation, A Magic Bullet. Again, same sentiments. And Lisa is a much junior than me, and she is still a professor in Oregon, in America. Anybody, any questions? Yes. Sir, uh, you have shown in previous like some two, uh, four or five slides, like there was a recent paper which was done where you have shown that TNF, uh, TNF alpha activates the uh, NF kappa B, which further activates the IL-6. But uh, IL-6 as such, uh, as far as I know, it's a controversial topic. It says that it's a pro-inflammatory as well as an anti-inflammatory cytokines. So how can we just use IL-6 as a marker? Why not we use other IL or some IONOS, uh, other factors as the marker? Like yeah. So, you know, <coughs> IL-6 is a pro-inflammatory and there already have been drugs that have been developed which target only IL-6 and to block the production of IL-6 and again be that whether TNF or IL-6, we need all of them in the body. But same agent when it gets out of control is causing the havoc. But sir, there are some literature which uh, says that IL-6 is an anti-inflammatory cytokine source. No, that I'm not so sure about. No, no, I, 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 I completely disagree. Yes, because we also yeah. have a doubt in that. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. See, there is a, as I said, inflammation is a double-edged sword. And IL-6, uh, all the literature indicates it is pro-inflammatory. That's why they made specific blockers of IL-6 as a therapeutic. And it's already approved by the FDA. 
Okay. Yeah. Any other question? IL-4 on the other hand, by the way, is anti-inflammatory, not IL-6. IL-4 is. IL-10, IL-8 comes under anti-inflammatory. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so this is, I'm sharing with you the opinion of uh, uh, somebody else who is what they think of inflammation. So having said everything now about NF-kappa B, having said everything about TNF, interleukins, everything, and all the carcinogens, everything that uh, lead to activation of inflammation, and which means fire. Now the question is how to control that fire. So I say, I made a statement that what we need is a fire extinguisher to control the inflammation, which means how to suppress NF-kappa B activation safely. You know, when people recognize the problem, you know, they can come up with the inhibitors, but sometimes those inhibitors may not be safe. They may have a lot of side effects. So safety comes number one. So that's why there is a phase one, phase two, phase three clinical trials. And the idea of this clinical trial is phase one is just to show the safety. The safety is not an issue. Because if safety is an issue, it will not go very far. It will be stopped right there. So, so then comes phase two, which is the efficacy. Okay, that how efficacy does it work? and, uh, and uh, how good does it work? And then there's a phase three, in how many people does it work? Does it work in everybody? Or one in 10, or two in 10, or whatever, okay? So, so this is what it is that a fire extinguisher, how to suppress NF-kappa B activation safely. So, to, before I go any further, I just want to share with you a little bit about TNF because TNF is just a one single protein and its blockade is a very inflammatory issue that I mentioned yesterday that if you were to block TNF, uh, it has been approved by the FDA with a market over $50 billion and I'm going to show you what it is uh, uh, approved for. And so, so what it is approved for is good for you. But there is something else. The, all those blockers have a lot of side effects. Okay? So, so, so those side effects are very, very serious. And that's why it is itself is an inflammatory issue. It is not that easy. Okay, so people are taking, you know, spending thousands of dollars taking TNF blockers, but then they have to live with the side effects. So I'm going to show you what are those side effects. So probably one of the best way to block TNF is all these fruits and vegetables. And there's a whole issue of science connected with that, and I'm just showing you the cover of that, sharing with you. Okay. So another way to block TNF or inflammation is steroids and all of you know what is steroids or NSAID, non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs, that's what NSAID stands for or Celebrex, I mentioned you it is a COX-2 inhibitor and there is a, a drug called metformin which is used for diabetes and, uh, and then there are statins which is used to, for cholesterol. However, I'm going to tell you all about natural products and traditional medicine that can block NF-kappa B, that can block TNF, and that can do all this, what these things can. Okay? So even aspirin, remember I mentioned you yesterday that mother brings us this word Mother Nature is there to take care of it. And even aspirin was isolated from a willow tree way, way, way back then. And this is the structure of aspirin. And this is the willow tree. And then even steroids that was, came from fenugreek. 
okay i don't know what is locally called fenugreek it's also called methre you know and that is diastyanin this is steroid and even metformin that came from goats through galiga officinalis and this is the structure of it and you can see and even statins that came from aspergillus and here is the structure of aspergillus so so that goes on to show you that how far back it goes and is no different than what hippocrates mentioned 5th century bc 2500 years ago let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food and that's what we are talking okay so so that is where it came from so there is a, a drug called rapamycin and it is used for cancer treatment and there was a guy his name is a sagal and he happened to be in an island in canada and the name of the island is rapa rapa island and he was looking for an agent that can kill this uh, a fungus anti fungal agent so he ended up naming it rapamycin and today it is used for cancer and blocks inflammation and here i'm showing you a little bit of history and that was way back in 1975 another that we did is a cancer drug discovery by repurposing so i think my time is running out right i'm sorry okay so i think that uh, uh this article is very very important that what we talk about is a cancer drug discovery by repurposing teaching new tricks to old dog so this is uh, was published in trends in pharmacological sciences and here we can see that we are on the cover about teaching old drugs new tricks so so same drug that is used for xyz can be used now for completely something else so in other words what they call targeted therapies are not targeted therapies at all they are more disease oriented so we mention that several different drugs you know normally it takes about 15 years for the development of a drug but if you take say for example uh, metformin metformin has been around for 100 years and now you are taking a same metformin and using it for cancer you don't have to wait for a, you know 15 years you can come up with a year or two whether it works for cancer or not and that is what you call repurposing taking a same guy have him do different things that's what i mean by repurposing so i listed whole bunch of drugs about 50 of them that the even rapamycin that what i mentioned that originally it was discovered as an anti fungal agent but now it is used for cancer so the list goes on and on and this is uh, already published and you can look it up so i think we can stop right here and uh, we can continue later on thank you very very important that the more question you ask the better can somebody translate which 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 therapy and you and your therapy angina angiogenesis yeah okay
question is whether the suppression of this blood vessel formation anti-angiogenic therapy, right. whether it is specific to any particular cancer as it is general to multiple kinds of cancers. Yeah. That is the question? Yeah. Now, yes. how would uh, let's take the first question, let me answer, then we can go for the second question. Okay, so the question, if I understood correctly, is uh, anti-angiogenesis therapy specific to any type of cancer or it takes care of every cancer? Am I right? So the answer is that angiogenesis occurs only in the solid tumors. It does not occur in liquid tumors. Meaning if somebody has a leukemia, there's no angiogenesis, okay? And any kind of blood cancer, there's no angiogenesis involved. On the other hand, if it is a solid tumor, then there is an angiogenesis in there. So therefore, anti-angiogenesis therapy will work only for the solid tumors, not for the liquid tumors. efficacy of the anti-angiogenic therapy with reference to the chemotherapy. Is okay. that the question? Yeah. So, <clears throat> the question is chemotherapy and anti-angiogenesis therapy. We are talking apples and oranges. Apple does apple, orange does orange. So, what does that mean? that chemotherapy is out there to kill anybody and everybody it can get hold of, okay? Whereas anti-angiogenesis therapy is only blood vessels that are supplying the blood and nothing else. So there is a completely different approach with anti-angiogenesis therapy as compared to chemotherapy. Chemotherapy just kill the cancer guy. Whereas anti-angiogenesis therapy is only for the blood vessels and nothing else. Am I clear? Yeah. I have a very innocent type of hypothesis that when we do yoga, when we do yoga or any type of, uh, you can say, meditation, our blood gets oxygenated. And during the oxygenation of our blood, it forms into various coins and a lot of oxygen it carries when it goes to the lungs. So that oxygen helps uh, in a way to make you more well-being, I mean, make more healthy. And that's why everybody who does a lot of meditation, you find a different glow on your face. Applying that hypothesis, which is very innocent, don't misunderstand, coming from military man. If we load with that oxygen, our most favored curcumin, which has shown the best results in with MF kappa B, then it goes into the bloodstream where our blood circulates in the body in the 20 minute cycle or something like that, which I read. Will it help across the board in making you uh, well and reducing that cycle of growth? from 10 to 20 years why India is getting cancer in 42 years. So if our children in India are targeted in that way and their blood is pumped with oxygen by various spiritual exercises in the school and then curcumin, uh, you can say curcumin dash or oh, sorry shot, curcumin shot, these children over 5 years will they develop the immunity and their NF kappa B will not let them fight. Cancer. This is sorry for the innocence. See, there is a something called science, and there's something called black magic. So, so science requires evidence. Without evidence, there is no science. So, what you are talking about, black magic, 
and there is no science behind it. So, yes, whatever you said may be true, but there is no science, nothing to back it up. So, therefore, I cannot answer your question. Am I clear? So, there is no science. So, that's not science. Nobody has done anything to prove or disapprove one way or the other. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's why I said innocent. Yeah. No, that is personal, very personal thing. Oh, no, it's very innocent yeah. thought. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But scientifically, there is no evidence. So, everything that I'm talking about today is evidence based. And uh, so, I don't want to get something hypothetical that is another ball game altogether. Question.